the floor of conservation uh, commission meeting tonight. Uh, public hearing room, uh, Monday, September 13, 2021 at 530 in the first floor hearing room. Our first time back to this new remodeled room. Looks great. At one government center. Um, uh, open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting laws, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recording or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Uh, let's see. Um, roll call. We'll start to my right. Thank you. Louis Ferrer. John Brandt. And we're missing um, uh, Chris Boyle. And, uh, I think that's it. And we had a resignation. And we had a resignation. Uh, Andy Liss, who was on the board for about five years, had to uh, resign due to being too busy at work, which is a good thing, so uh, we'll miss him. Uh, okay, on with uh, the business of tonight. Uh, old business, uh, report by city planner, acting uh, conservation agent regarding violations at 2450 Indian Town Road from table from August 2nd, 2021 meeting. And I think we're waiting to hear back from uh, Mike Lavasi? Yeah, I just spoke with him. Before I report on that, I just want to uh, let you know that we have uh, a uh, landmark day today. For the first time in decades, the city of Fall River has an assistant planner, which is sitting to my left, uh, Caitlin Young, who has started today, September 13th, which I'm going to keep in my memory along with the way I, the day I was married and the day my brother was married and some things like that. So it's a red letter day. Um, and also, from the, the entire planning department is here tonight to, for your benefit. We have uh, Nina Pavo and um, Kristen, Ke Ke <laughs> Kristen somebody. Christine, still Christine. Christine. Yeah. It's still Christ Silva. Christine Silva. Silva. And uh, we're going to use name tags at the next meeting. Yeah. Right? So, uh, but on to the business at hand. Uh, I just spoke with Mike Labossier, and this is a case that, as you know, has been... Uh, around for a while. Um, the current status is that uh, the city, through Mike, has made an attempt to offer to purchase this property with the hope that they could uh, then reverse the environmental damage that was done by the current owner. Um, and um, Mike says he believes they've come to uh, an agreement, perhaps, as to price. He also believes that he's going to have some uh, grants available to pay for the purchase. Uh, but in the meantime, in case that does not go forward, uh, he's suggesting that we proceed with the suggestion that I made uh, recently that uh, we go to the owner and see if he can at least take some baby steps towards uh, resolving the, the damage that was done. The, the problem being, of course, that if we, we order him to uh, restore the, the area as it should be, uh, he hasn't got the financial ability to do that. And um, uh, from a practical point of view, uh, the thought that I've heard from Mass DEP is that really we should see if we can maybe have him do some work on his own that he wouldn't have to pay for. He does have an environmental scientist who looked at the situation a couple of years ago and uh, gave some thoughts as to what, a, uh, uh, what could be done to restore the area. And so we're going to contact him within the next week or so to see if he can uh, undertake some work that would not be financially impossible for him to do uh, to start moving in the right direction just in case this purchase transaction doesn't come to fruition. So uh, with that, I just recommend you table it till the next meeting for a further report. Okay. Can I have a motion to table to the October 4th meeting? I make a motion to table the matter till October meeting. I second. Uh, vote. Vote yep. passes 3-0. Uh, is that October 4th? Is that correct? Yep. Mm. Ms. Silva? Uh, Sylvia. Sylvia. <laughs> okay. uh, next is a report by city planner acting conservation agent regarding Bay Street and Chase Street, continued from August 2nd, 2021. And I guess uh, uh, the um, swell has been uh, installed and uh, rip wraps up and... Uh, Dennis Sylvia said it, it meets everything satisfied. That would be Dennis Silva. Dennis Silva. Yes, Dennis has checked it out, and uh, 
this was a case to which we had to issue an, an enforcement order because uh, work that was being done uh, near the corner of Bay and Chase Street was having an adverse drainage um, stormwater runoff effect on a neighboring property, and we had a uh, had them design a new swale and some riprap to install. Uh, they designed it. We approved it. it. Dennis says it's been installed. He's satisfied with it. So there's no need to proceed further with the order of enf with the enforcement order. So I just uh, recommend you table this indefinitely so that we don't have to deal with it next meeting. Okay. And we'll bring it back to your attention if the situation changes. Okay. So can we have a motion to table this indefinitely? I make a motion to table this indefinitely. Second. Uh, vote. Vote passes 3-0. All right, next is a notice of intent oh, NOI file numbers SE-24-756. Owner applicant is Carl's B. Abad Converti. Uh, project location is Frederick Street. Assessor's map is C-15-7, followed by SciTech on behalf of applicant Carl's B. Abad Converti to construct a single family home associated with grading and utilities. A portion of this project falls within the 100 foot buffer zone to the border, bordering vegetated wetlands table from August 2nd, 2021. Good evening. For the record, my name is Dan Aguiar from Civil Environmental Consultants, Inc. Here this evening on behalf of the applicant, Carlos Abad Campo Verde. John was pretty close with his, with his pronunciation. A few more month, monthly meetings, he'll get it. Yeah, well, <laughs> almost Hopefully there. This is the yeah. last one. Yeah. <laughs> um, you may recall a few months ago we had filed this initial petition to construct this single family home along the easterly side of Frederick Street. There was one last vacant lot just north of Bronson Street. At that yeah. time, the initial application was to build a raised ranch style home in a 90 degree configuration difference from what you see on the revised plan that you have. And what that did was it brought us very close to the bordering vegetated wetland that wraps around this site that you see shaded in yellow. This was at the time we started preparing this plan when the 25 foot no activity zone policy was just becoming in effect. So Bill had asked along with the board during the discussion if we could look at a different house design, different house configuration and try and limit the amount of disturbance that we were going to have on this lot. Currently on the property, the entire parcel is lawn right up to the wetlands line, and we've actually provided some aerial photographs prior to the Wetlands Protection Act being initiated that shows this lot being developed with multiple structures on it, in fact. Um, we did, however, uh, take the commission's concerns, went back and came up with a new house design where we were able to turn it to 90 degrees and run a very narrow deeper house, even smaller footprint. And what that's done is that's allowed us to pull the house away from the bordering vegetated wetland. So this rear house corner at its closest would be 26 and a half feet from this wetland flag uh, 105. Also at that meeting, it was determined that we were going to send this petition out for a peer review, uh, just because that bylaw was so new and let's get a fresh set of eyes on on what we were doing. So it was sent out to uh, Prime Engineering. Rick Rayom was the engineer who did review it, and he submitted a review letter, I think about a month, month and a half ago. We took some of his concerns um, and ad addressed them and incorporated it into this final revised plan. Uh, one of those, the biggest one of it, was that he is proposing that along this limit of work, uh, we also install a post and rail fence. Uh, that's had been added to this final revised plan so that it didn't just have to be a condition floating in space. It's actually on that plan. So we were able to keep the 25 foot no activity zone to the rear as Mr. Rayon requested. And at its closest point, just in this section, 12 feet from the border and vegetated wetland to the limit of work. And then it pulls away again, perpendicular to the street. The area outside of that post and rail fence will allow to be, be revegetated wild. Again, it is lawn now, uh, and over time, uh, it will reestablish itself with more substantial vegetation. We are hoping that this revised plan, um, in accordance with the recommendations of your peer reviewer, uh, will satisfy the board and we can move forward with this petition. If you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. Uh, no, you're satisfied with the fence and then uh, the signage that we've been putting? Uh... Normal signage along the limit of work, we're not opposed to that. I'm assuming that's going to be a standard condition from here on, from on, all, yeah. the, on all the applications. Did you see any? No, I, th I think this is a very good solution to the, to the problem. As you know, we were concerned about this because it's in a neighborhood where there have been a lot of issues raised in the 
in the recent past about uh, drainage and stormwater runoff and uh, wetlands incursions and so forth, but I think this was a, a, a very uh, responsible response to those concerns. Um, the conditions I've sent to Mr. Aguiar previous to the meeting, uh, they're similar to what we've used in other cases. It does include the fencing and the signage, which I think is important. So um, what I recommend is a vote to issue the order of conditions uh, to, based on the, the new plan uh, together with the special conditions that I've, that I've issued. And I distributed those to everybody on okay. the board before the meeting. So. All right. Okay. Any questions from the board? I have no questions unless you're going to read the special conditions. I was going to read the special conditions. Uh, so the special is revised plan. All work shall be in accordance with the February 17, 2021 plan as revised on August 14th. Recording prior to the start of work at the site, this ordinance of condition shall be recorded by applicant and proof of recording shall be provided to the Conservation Commission. Uh, market limit of work. Prior to the start of the work at the site, the limit work shall be clearly marked by installation of erosion control, construction, fencing, stakes, or flags, and the commission shall be notified that the installation is ready for inspection and approval. Such markers shall be checked and replaced if necessary and shall be maintained until all construction is complete. Workers shall be informed that no use of machinery, shorted, uh, storage of machinery or materials, stockpiling or, or of soil or construction activity has occurred beyond this line at any time. Uh, for resource area flagging, prior to the start of the work at the site, the limits of the wetland resource area closest to construction activity shall be flagged with uh, surveyor's tape and flags shall remain in place during construction. Five, approval of erosion control and sedimentation control prior to the start of work at the site. Erosion and sedimentation control shall be installed and the commission shall con contact it in order to conduct a, an inspection to ensure that the same have been properly installed to the commission's satisfaction. Uh, six, maintaining markers, flag controls at any time before, during, or after construction and until the nuisance of a uh, certificate of compliance, the commission or its agents shall be required that the applicant to modify augments of resource to maintain the markers identifying limit of work, the flags identifying resource areas of erosion and sedimentation control, measures or so to associated with activities that is subject to this order of conditions, erosion and sedimentation control devices shall remain in place, properly functioning until all exposed soils have been stabilized, finally uh, vegetative cover and conservation commission or agents has authorized the removal. Seven, stockpile. All stockpiles of soil existing for more than one day shall be surrounded by a row of entrenched silk fence and shall be covered. Uh, eight, grading. Grading shall be accomplished so that the runoff shall not be directed uh, to the property, property of others. Uh, nine, certificate of appliance. Upon the completion of construction of final soil Stabilization, the applicant shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission a request certificate of compliance, a completed uh, request for certificate of compliance, WPA Form 8A, or other form if required by the Conservation Commission at the time of the request. Uh, a letter from uh, a registered professional engineer certifying compliance of the property with the order conditions and detailing any deviation that exists uh, uh, and their potential effects on the project, a statement that the work is uh, substantially compliance with no detailing of deviation shall be accepted as built plans, plans signed and stamped by a professional engineer or a land surveyor. Um, post construction conditions within all areas under the jurisdiction of the wetlands protection. Uh, 10, permanent fencing and signage, which we just talked about, after completion of the work and as conditions to the issuance of a certi certificate of compliance and to Issuance of uh, occupancy certificate, the applicant shall erect and shall maintain permanently a post and rail fence along the wetlands edge to prevent further encroachment. In addition, the applicant shall permanently mark the edges of the wetlands uh, with one or more signs attached to the fence and invert the uh, encroachment into the wetlands. The design numbers of the uh, signs in the manner of the posting shall be determined by the commission. The signs shall measure at least 12 by 12 and shall contain the following language. This is protected conservation area uh, per MGL 
CH 131, Section 40, any disturbance or alteration of this area by removal of materials or by dumping or fill, clipping yard, or any other debris is strictly prohibited per order of the forward conservation. Uh, these are continuing conditions and shall be responsibility of subsequent owner to maintain the fence and signs in proper condition <coughs> and contributory. Any failure to do so shall be grounds of a nuisance of enforcement order. If I may, Mr. Chairman, um, in the middle of that paragraph, you referenced the location of the post and rail fence. Mm -hmm. I think you said it's to be placed at the wetlands line. It's to be placed at the limit of work line, which is at least 12 feet off of that wetlands line. They might just want to change that. If that's your intention. Yeah, uh, wetland edge. So we want to change that to? The limit of work line as shown on the approved plan. Okay. So change that to? Uh, this is the permanent fence we're talking about. Permanent, permanent fence, fence yeah. correct. Yeah. I think in Mr. Rayom's recommendation, he had said at the limit of work, not at the wetlands line. Let's, let's take we're a look. We'll gladly put it at the wetlands line. Let's, see, let's see what <laughs> his recommendation was. All right, let's read it one more time. <laughs> Let me just find it in my notes. It does say the wetlands. Uh, I mean, we'll take it to the wetlands line, but I don't think that's what. I don't think that's what. I don't think that's the intent, but. Yeah, I know it's in here somewhere. That's where he referenced the 12-foot dimension, and that's what I had held for this. Mm. Yeah, uh, he those recommended. Those are my notes based on what I read. Maybe I misread it, but yeah, don't read oh. those notes. Read, read yeah, don't read my notes. notes. <laughs> okay. I don't think it says it. Came in, it came, it came in, a, in an email from Rich Rayon after I sent him the uh, updated plans to review. Mm. And um, you can check it in the morning, and you can you have to correct that condition. That's oh, here we go. Yeah, here's uh, Rich Ray on the commission may want to post a rail fence along the wetland edge to prevent further encroachment. So that was his recommendation. Which one is that from? That was his response to your plan, your revised plans. Do you have his initial? Yeah. yeah. Along the work limits, but that's yeah. fine. Leave it as, leave it as, you have, line. A, you have a preference? No, I would rather go right to the wetlands line, but we weren't asking for that. But anyway, well, um, so how do you want to resolve that? Do you want me to uh, head for the discussion with Dan tomorrow and see which? Uh, they can still move the project conditional upon your review of the of that, of that sentence from Ray Allman. <laughs> okay. So Whichever we'll one the consultant recommended, we'll go. Yeah. yeah. So we'll make a motion as oh. it stands right now. Okay. In accordance with well. the consultant's recommendations. Yeah. Location I mean, in fairness, your response was that you'd be happy to go to the limit of work. That that's what he asked for, and I, I can send you that correspondence. And well, he he asked for. I, I know. That is I didn't come up with the twelve foot mark for, from out of my head. So. It didn't come to you in a dream. Or no, it did not. Right. Why don't we just go with the plan? Because that that's a smaller footprint than what 
the wetlands line would be. And I'm pretty sure that Put was it at what, the limit of work. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah, that let's, was Let's do was, that. And I think sure that's, that's, that's what you had said in one of yours that you would be yeah. agreeable to. Yeah. And, and that's probably what he intended. And it's, it's better protection-wise for right. the wetlands. So, um, and that's, could you just show yeah, me? Yeah, so what you see shaded in green, at the closest point, it would be 12, which is what Mr. Rayon recommended. And he had actually said to the east, we could hold the 25, which we did there as well. So the fence is going to be along the? Along that line. Yeah. Along what you see is green. So that's what I was saying. This area, yeah. which is upland, will be allowed to be revegetated along that wetland edge. I think that's that's fine. Yeah. We'll go with that. So I can, I'll can i change that. Because I think he had said that was a compromise to not meet the 25 foot no activity yeah. zone. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. OK. I'll so change the, that one word on there okay. before we issue. All right. I'll make the motion to accept with the special condi conditions and uh, also with the understand that we'll Revise. make the edit yeah. in that last part. And uh, yeah. Okay. Second. Second. Vote. Yeah. Vote passes 3-0. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Finally mm -hmm. glad it's off the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you, are you going to jump in? Yeah, I was going to recommend to the chair if it's agreeable to everybody. Uh, Dan has another engagement tonight. And he has another matter deeper into the list that he's covering for, for uh, somebody. And I wonder if we could take number two, uh, number two, number two on the agenda out of order uh, to be addressed. That's the Nantucket Seafood. Okay. Uh, case. Can, I, can I have a motion to take uh, number two out of order? I will make that motion. Second. Vote. Okay, we'll take that out of. <laughs> okay, um, under new business, request of a nuisance, uh, amended order of conditions, notice of intent is NOI file number SE-24-0695, owner applicant is Nantucket Sound Seafood, project location is Airport Road, assessor's map is Z-03, lot 108, filed by Zytec on behalf of Nantucket Sound Seafood, to amend the order of conditions filed August 7, uh, 15, 2017. Good evening again for the record. Dan Aguiar from Civil Environmental Consultants, Inc. On behalf of Nantucket uh, Sound Seafood. The plans that you have before you are a uh, revised set of plans that had started at its beginnings of an approved project that, that the commission had approved a number of years ago, as, as the chairman stated. Since that time, the applicant had requested that we modify the building design, which in turn required us to modify some drainage work and some limit of work for the project in general. I, I think that the way that the course of action should take place is in this request, there is also a request uh, to extend the timeline of the existing permit that's set to expire November 20th, 2021 for a two-year uh, period of extension. So I think the board might want to make that uh, motion and, and move that prior to uh, prior to the amendment. Okay. Uh, so you're looking for a, a two-year extension? A two-year extension. So it would be uh, to? So it would go from November to 20, November 23. So uh, can I have a motion to extend, uh, uh, grant an extension until November uh, 2023? I'll make that motion to grant the extension to November 2023. Second. Uh, vote? Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3 0. Okay. Great. Thank you. We'll move forward with the rest of the presentation. We do have green cards that we did send out to all of the abutters um, under the amendment requirements. Uh, on the plan set that you have and the plan set that I have up on this board before you, in general, the project is just about identical. Overall, what we've been able to do is shrink the limit of work for the project as a whole. So what we did do is we enlarged this building with this little front addition, reconfigured this front parking area, reconfigured this detention basin. But the biggest thing that we were able to do is we were able to drop the site by three feet. And what that's allowed us to do 
So this limit of pavement line, which was the closest to the wetland, and it was actually approved for a wetland alteration, I think of about 4,000 square feet. Because we were able to drop the site by three feet, this line that you see here, that I've just drawn in, that used to be the old limit of work line. But because we've dropped the site and we don't need to grade out that three feet in an increased elevation difference, we were able to pull back that limit of work and reduce the amount of wetland alteration down to 2,300 square feet from what was previously approved. So in all, we're still building the same type of building. It's a little bit bigger. We were able to reduce the amount of asphalt, um, reduce the amount of fill in general over the entire site. Initially, when we were coming up to this driveway, we were at elevation 183. We've been able to bring the site down to 180 in this location. Again, the building foundation from 183.5 to 180.5. And as we start coming around the rear of the building, where we were at 182, we've been now been able to bring that site down to 178. So that's allowed us to shrink the overall building <coughs> footprint. Um, the planes, as you see it, have been through site plan review already. Uh, without negative comment from uh, city engineer, DPW, planning, uh, but as a formality so that everyone has the right set of plans in the right place, uh, Bill felt that it was appropriate to file for this request of amendment. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. Any questions that the abutters may have, um, and it is our hope that, that you'll move the project forward. Thank you. Could I just ask? Sure. I'm looking at the original order of conditions and it references a proposed alteration of 2,300 square feet. Are you saying, I thought that's what you told me was the new. That's on this new one, yes. So I have. But this was on the old order. I have that the original was 3,855 and that this new one is 2,300. Do you have the old set of plans with you? Yeah, I do. But this is the old order. This was the order condition based on the 2017 plan. I'm just going by my cheat sheet that yeah, Mr. Giosi yeah, gave me. Yeah. <laughs> so if, well, it, I mean, if it was we, uh, 2300 at the time, the plan set that he had given to me earlier in the day that showed the limit of work extended to this location, so it made sense to me that we were pulling it back and having a smaller reduction. In any event, if the old, the old Alteration was 2300. That's the same amount of alteration that we have. So, here. okay, so it's going to be 12. So, in any event, it would be no larger. I'm being told that it is much smaller, but it would be no larger than the 2300. Yeah, so, this is before. this has got an alteration of 2300 and a, a replacement of uh, 2300. So, okay, okay, if that just check your notes if that's oh, I'm going to do something as different. I, as soon as yeah, I leave I'm today, sure I'm going to call them. Sure <laughs> we call this a setup sometimes. <laughs> Just call me tomorrow and we'll make sure the final document reflects what you really mean. Yeah. That's correct. So Where's the replication area on right here? Right down here, yeah, that, that has it moved. So a 2,300 square foot replication area here, which would be adjacent. This is the wetlands line now. Yeah. So we'll basically be filling in this little cubby that the wetland did before. Uh, and there on the detail sheet, there are an extensive wetlands replication plan. Does the board have any questions? I have no questions. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to recommend you approve it. You've already approved the extension. Yeah. I'd approve the new plan and um, authorize issuance of the order of conditions with the same special conditions that were issued on the original one. So there's no need to change those. Okay. Uh, so can I have a motion to? Uh, Use the same conditions that uh, we did on the uh, one we passed in 2017. Yeah. I'll make the motion uh, to move it forward along with the special conditions originally uh, proposed in 2017. Second. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3-0. Thank you very much. You guys have a nice night. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Item number four. Zero four. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, notice of intent is NOI file number SC-24-780, owner uh, Kenneth Steen. Stein? Steen. Uh, Steen. Okay. Applicant is AIS Real Estate Development Corp. Project location is 77 Briarwood Lane, lot 37. Assessor's map is APO. Uh, dash U dash O four dash O O one dash APO. Is this okay, Mr. Chairman? We have a series of these. These are a number of lots in the uh, in a, in a portion of the so-called Highland Farms Phase Two. Can we group these as one order condition? Um, well, they're each going to have their own separate order. Right. Uh, you, you, you may. Uh, how about if I uh, just sort of give you my. Well, if the proponent has anything to propose, we could hear that. But he was here before, and, and we asked for some yes. corrections on the plans. Mm -hmm. They've been submitted, yep. um, they're fine. Uh, and, and I'm just, if I could just run through each of them and give you my comments. Sure. They're pretty quick. Uh, and then uh, I suppose uh, we should have a vote on each one just for okay. procedure. Uh, but I can go through the comments. The first one is uh, lot 37, that's SE 24780. I've taken a look at it that what they're doing is entirely outside even the 100 foot buffer zones. There's no issues that I see that would prevent the issuance of an order of condition on that. Uh, the next one is, um, let's see, SE 24776. Uh, my notes are that the, the dwelling is going to be entirely within the 100 foot buffer zone and partly within that 25 foot no build zone that we have established by policy. But despite that incursion, we have a retaining wall, uh, which is going to be an 11 foot tall retaining wall outside the wetland area that's going to help uh, avoid any further encroachments on the area, which is really what we're wor thinking about with the 25 feet. We're trying to get some mm -hmm. breathing room. And so the retaining wall serves that purpose. Uh, so I think that's, that's a good feature, uh, particularly given the proximity to the wetlands. But they've, they've got the retaining wall. That's a good thing. Um, so that should that be in the conditions, the retaining wall? Oh, that's part of the plan. That's, part of, that's, the, that's okay. part of the plan. So we don't have to mention it specifically. Um, the uh, next one is uh, lot 36, which is SE 24779. It works entirely within the 100 foot buffer, but it's entirely outside our 25 foot no build. So I think that's, that's satisfactory. Uh, the next one is, uh, let's see, ANR lot 6, and that's uh, SE 24777. Let me see what my notes are on that. Uh, again, the house is going to be built entirely within the 100-foot buffer zone, but it's entirely outside that 25-foot uh, limit of uh, no work area uh, that, that we want. Uh, the limit of work is, a, is about 11 feet from the wetlands, but again, in this case, there's a retaining wall uh, that's going to be erected, and um, that's going to be a, a nice feature, an important feature to prevent the possibility of further or future encroachments. So that, I think that should be approved. Uh, the next one is ANR lot 35. I'm sorry, it's not ANR. It's lot 35. It's SE 24778. And my notes on that. Uh, again, entirely within the 100 foot buffer zone, but entirely outside our 25 foot policy, no build. I think that's going to be okay. Finally, I've got SE 24775, which is ANR lot 4. Um, let's see. Partly outside the 100-foot the buffer, partly inside it. Again, it's entirely outside our 25-foot no-build buffer. That's a good thing. Uh, I had just asked for the, a label to be put on the, the plan to, to, to show that the 25-foot line is what it looks like it is and I don't know if you if you brought that in for me that was just a, a housekeeping tweak on that if you could I, I didn't bring it in sir I think that we had e exchanged emails but I'm happy to provide print copies okay for sure. so that's good so those those are all in good shape uh, I'm recommending you 
approve the issuance of orders of condition for each of them, each of them to have the same conditions, the same special conditions that we've used on the previous lots that were approved for this for this uh, subdivision, Highland Farms too. Uh, and the only other thing I want to add is just to, to check with, uh, with uh, Chris to verify that we, that we have now all of the green cards and all of the proof of advertising that we needed. We do. Okay. So we're good for that. So there is one other that, that, that came in originally to be a, uh, an RDA and uh, it was subsequently resubmitted but as a, an NOI and I think that was uh, agenda That's item one. New yes. business right? one. Yeah, agenda yes. item one, SC 24781, which is lot 34. I'm sorry, not lot 34. It's, uh, no, it is 34. No, it is 34. It is 34. Oh, okay. And you've got the file. That's why I, why I don't have the file. Okay. Yeah. There's an explanation for almost everything. Let me see if I had. Yeah. It just nixed the Thank buffer. You. So it's almost entirely outside the 100 foot buffer. No, no issues with that one. So I would add that to the pile and suggest you approve issuance of an order of conditions for that as well, um, along with the. Same special conditions that we've issued on the other Highland Farms two lots. Okay. And that's all I have to say about that. Board have any questions on that? Uh, no questions. Okay. I suggest just for the record that you take a separate vote on each one. Okay. Now, do I have to read in the conditions, or is that just? Well, you may, uh, but uh, they're the same as what the board approved on other cases in the past, so, so it's not necessary. They're, they're of record, uh, and they're going to be issued with those and, conditions. And then we put those on record. When was the date on that? Um, the conditions for these. For the last, uh, when we did the first oh. Highland Farms. Yeah, he's just asking when was the meeting at which we issued was the that some, August some 2nd? orders for the other, some of the other lots in, in which we used that, those same orders of condition. Mm, you no, happen to know? That was the July meeting. I think it, it was, was the, the July, July meeting. Yeah, yeah. July. Yeah, there was yeah. July, then you came in August. Uh, we were here in August. And we good. enjoyed your company so much, we asked you to come back again. So, so happy to be July. here. July 11th, I believe 11th. I can tell you for sure. July 12th, maybe. Yeah, sure. July 12th. July 12th, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that instead of reading all this. Again. Yeah. No. <laughs> All righty. So you probably want to start with uh, would it be item 04. Yeah. We'll just take a vote. That, again, the proposal is issue an order of conditions with the same special conditions that okay. we issued previously for the subdivision. All righty. Uh, okay. On the uh, Project 77 Briarwood, uh, can I have a motion to order conditions uh, using the same uh, special conditions we had on July 12th? I make a motion to. Uh, Yes, to uh, apply the same order conditions from uh, our August meeting to uh, July 12th. July 12th, thank you. Second. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Vote passes 3 0. Next one is notice of intent. I know file numbers SE 24 776. Owner Kev Kenneth Steen. Applicant is AIS Real Estate Development Corp. Project location is 270 Courtney Street. ANR 5 assessor's map is U-04-001 APO filed by Allen and Majors Associates Inc. on behalf of AIS Real Estate Development Corp. to construct a single family dwelling with driveway and utility service pursuant to Highland Farms 2 subdivision table from August 2nd, 2021 meeting. Can I have a motion for order conditions uh, with the special conditions we put in effect uh, on July 12th? I make a motion to accept the application with the order of conditions from July 12th. Second. Vote. Aye. Right. Vote passes 3-0. Next is a notice of intent NOI file number SC-24-779, owner uh, Kenneth Stain. Uh, applicant is AIS Real Estate Development. Project location is 53 Briar Wood Lane, lot 36. Assessor's map is U-04-0002 APO. Applied by Allen and Major Associates on behalf of AIS Real Estate Development Corp. to construct a single-family dwelling with driveway and utility service pursuant to the Highland 
Farms 2 subdivision table from August 2nd, 2021. Can I have a motion for order conditions with the special conditions we put in effect uh, July 12th? I make a motion to approve with the special order conditions. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3 0. Uh, 07, notice of intent is NOI file number SE 24 777. Owner Kenneth Steen. Uh, applicant is AIS uh, Real Estate Development Corp. Project location is 298 Courtney Street. ANR 6 assessor's map is U 04 001. Filed by Allen and Majors Associates, Inc. on behalf of AIS Real Estate Development Corp. to construct a single family dwelling with driveway and utility service pursuant to the Highland Farms 2 subdivision table from August 2nd, 2021 meeting. Can I have a motion for uh, order conditions uh, that we special conditions from July 12th? I make a motion to approve with the order of special conditions. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3 0. Okay. Um, next is uh, 08, notice of intent, NOI file number SC 24 778, owner Kenneth Stein. Applicant is AIS Real Estate. Development Corp. Project location is 27 uh, Briarwood Lane, Lot 35. Assessor's map is U-04-001, filed by Allen and Major Associates, Inc. on behalf of AIS Real Estate Development Corp. to construct a single-family dwelling with driveway, utility service, pursuant to Highland Farms 2 subdivision table from August 2nd, 2021 meeting. Can I have an order of condition uh, with the uh, special conditions we placed on July 12th? I make a motion to approve with the special order conditions. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. 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 Passes 3 0. Uh, next one is uh, 09, notice of intent, NOI file number SC 24 775. Owner is Kenneth Steen. Uh, applicant is AIS Real Estate Development Corp. Project location 242 Courtney Street. ANR 4 assessor's map is OU 04. Dash 001, filed by Allen and Major Associates, Inc. on behalf of AIS Real Estate Development Corp. to construct a single-family dwelling with driveway, utility service pursuant to the Highland Farms 2 subdivision, table from August 2nd, 2021 meeting. Can I have order of conditions with the special conditions we put in place July 12th? I make a motion to approve with the order of special conditions from July 12th. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3-0. Um, then we have uh, uh, under new business uh, notice uh, one notice of intent is NOI file number SC 24 781. Owner Kenneth Stain. Uh, applicant is AIS Real, Real Estate Development Corp. Uh, project location is 11 Briarwood Lane, lot 34. Assessor's map is 0 04 001 APO. Filed by Allen and Major Associate Inks. On behalf of AIS Real Estate Development Corp. to construct a single family dwelling with driveway and utility service pursuant to the Highland Farm 2 subdivision. Can I have a uh, order of conditions uh, with special conditions uh, we put in effect July 12th? Uh, I make that motion to uh, approve with the special order conditions. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3 0. Okay. That was the last one on that one, right? Yeah. So that's, uh, Thank you. I think you're free to go. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Thanks for coming. Have a good evening. Um, is, that, is that Mr. Stein in the back there? Yeah, did, right there. Did, did, you, did he have anything you wanted to add? Or? Uh, no comment. Good. <laughs> Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. Talk to you later. All right. Uh, so, so we're doing agenda item, new business item three. Three, three now? Yeah? Yeah. Or did we? Nope. Did we do Nantucket soon? We moved two out of order, so Dan Oh, that's right. Dan yeah, we moved two out of order. Silly me. Yes, you're right. So Item three. Three, we have a request for an instance of an amended order of conditions, uh, notice of intent, NOI file number SE-24-0745. Owner applicant is City of Fall River. Um, that was just to put on. Somebody here sitting here. I think we do. Do we? Yeah,
members of the commission, Carlos Flutie with Civil Environment and Consultants, uh, here on behalf of the applicant of the City of Fall River. Uh, the project is the Henry uh, Ward Community Schools and Access Road uh, construction that was originally approved in March of 2020. Uh, subsequent to the original approval, uh, essentially the project was reviewed with the city, ultimately put out the bid, uh, and has since been awarded. Uh, the contractor is ready to mobilize, uh, has two rows of controllables uh, ready to go at the site. Uh, he just wants to come before the board uh, to just review some minor modifications so that we can get an updated plan for the record. Uh, so I'll just walk you through quickly some of the changes that we have. Everybody's reference. Uh, here is the school. Uh, Mariano Bishop Drive is uh, at the southerly edge of the school. You know, I'm just if the, 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 can we angle that so that maybe can the folks it? back here can see it as well? Sure. Maybe Thank see. you. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Can you guys still see? Yeah, yeah we're good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for reference, uh, here's the football fields. Here's the school. There's an existing parking lot that dead ends here. Uh, we have Mariano Bishop Drive along the south of the site here. Uh, essentially, during overflow conditions, sporting events, you know, people tend to pull out here and park on the grass areas outside of the fenced area. So, as part of the project, uh, what was originally approved was construction of a new access roadway that connects the parking here out to Mariano Bishop Drive, essentially for the exclusive uses of buses during traditional school operation uh, and during uh, other events where additional parking might be needed. People like that access to these parking areas. Uh, intended mainly to help the traffic flow for the buses for the exiting movement as a one-way exit uh, out onto Mariano Bishop Drive. So here is a uh, more detailed view of what is currently being proposed, uh, very similar to what was originally approved. Uh, we're maintaining the same width of the access drive, the same parking configuration, uh, the same approach to the creating drainage and stormwater management. Uh, the only pieces that were added was that there was a sidewalk added that helps with the pedestrian connectivity out on to Mariano Bishop. We're at the segment of sidewalk from here, along the backside, outside of the, the wetlands areas, out onto Mariano Bishop uh, was added there. Uh, we do have an existing wetlands crossing, and it was intentionally not added along the edge of the roadway to not add to the impacts for the actual wetlands crossing keeping it to the outer portions of the buffer areas while helping with the pedestrian connectivity there. Uh, there was also a small segment of sidewalk that was added at the northerly end, which connects, again, that passageway from this old path up to the school. Originally, there was going to be a short gap, but there wasn't going to be a sidewalk, so we're just maintaining that connection at that end. Uh, and then the only other change that was made uh, was that we reconfigured the shape of the detention basins due to the location of the existing electric easement along the westerly side uh, of the property. We pulled the basins in a little bit and expanded the footprint. Uh, we also did some geotechnical borings and additional exploration prior to bidding of the project. Uh, so with that, it, it did look like the groundwater was a little bit higher than was originally uh, anticipated in this location. So we also raised up the bottom of the elevation of the infiltration basin in that location as well. Uh, so fairly straightforward on the changes. Uh, the net result is there's approximately 1,400 square feet of additional impervious areas, which are due to the uh, addition of the sidewalk areas that we have at both ends there. Uh, we did provide in the request to amend uh, an updated hydrocat analysis that documents that the pre-development rates will still be continued to be met in post-development condition. Uh, we're also providing the same amount of water quality recharge and uh, water quality volume. Uh, as part of the proposed project. Uh, so with that, happy to take any questions or answer anything you may have for us. Now on the replication, where is that? Uh... So yeah, so we're not changing the impact areas for the actual wetland crossing. With the original project, there was uh, wetland impacts at this location here, where we're crossing the very upper end of this wetland. Uh, the replication area is proposed uh, immediately adjacent to that same wetland in this location. Mm -hmm. All right. Does uh, the board have any questions? I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I see yeah. we have some uh, folks here. To, uh, 
I'll, I'll start with the first one who wants yes. to state your name and address. My name is Frank Xavier. I live at 158 Amity Street, Fall River, Massachusetts, directly across the street from the school. Uh, now that proposed new wetlands you're talking about, is that going to impact the path that's over there now that some people were concerned about? No, there, there's not. There's an existing path, for those of you unfamiliar, so there's this kind of pathway that cuts between the trees and gets out to the, the, the water out that way. There's some signage for the connectivity we're maintaining. And that path that goes all the way away around that way down to a bench and everything else. Correct, yeah, so we're not touching that. That's, that's being left as it is today. Now the actual, um, exit itself in that parking lot. When is that supposed to be available, open? Because when I was here at the last meeting, mm -hmm. they said that that was gonna be gated, it was gonna be closed, it was only gonna be used sure. during field times. Yep. Now what is uh, changed? Uh, nothing in terms of the operational part of it, right? So this, this might show the, the layout a little bit better. Uh, it is one way to access only. There will be a gate located at this end. That stays exactly the way it was before. Uh, same thing to the gate at this end as well. So during you know non-bus uh, use times and non-sporting event types, those gates will be closed, uh, and it will be managed the same way. So then the it won't be used for the school. It, it won't be, be used for the buses uh, primarily. That's the point. Is it will the be traffic flow for the buses. Yes. Okay. So then during times of operations for the school, that will be available for that one-way passage. You're saying just for buses, for drop-off, for the kids, the parents? My understanding is the school intends to use it primarily for the buses. If there's teacher parking there, it's not meant for... Okay, so the else. school will have the ability to open and unlock, because before, I believe, it was the... They were saying it was the field operations that were going to have control over the gates. Now you're mm -hmm. saying, because if the school can open it and use it, I'm all for it. If, yeah, yeah. if it's not going to be used for that purpose, which, like I said, the last meeting, it sounded more like, then I would totally oppose it. No, it's it's meant to help with the traffic circulation for the schools to leave the burden on the other streets to help. You know, yeah, because that's where I live, the directly way. across the street. Yep. You know, yeah, that's and and it's uh, it's crazy. <laughs> I live right next to them. Yep. And um, the parking, you know, when you go to school, yeah, it's crazy there. Pull right in front of your mailbox, pull no. right in front of your drive. They, I don't know if it was going to be used for any. Now, the other thing that we have had is we've had problems on Amity Street with parents going down to use the field, speeding. We had one of the neighbor's dogs killed three weeks ago by a, a parent flying down the street. Is there any way we could even get speed bumps or something put on Amity Street? Because these people, they don't care. They fly down that street. They're late to go to games now for the Falcons and, you know, the ball games. It's ridiculous. They see a dead-end street and it's going to the back there and they don't care. You know, I would like something that can limit their speed and not just a sign because these people do not care. Yeah, that's a good suggestion, but we're only conservation, so I couldn't recommend that. So you probably have to do, see, like DPW or... Traffic, call traffic, and I'll look into it. Yeah. Uh, can you just state your name and address? Uh, Paul Shagner, mm -hmm. and 146 Amity Street. All right. Uh, does anyone else have anything to say? Um, Janelle Korea, and I'm at 948 Mariano Bishop Boulevard. Um, this was the first letter that I have received about this project. So I hadn't realized that this project was already approved uh, prior to this meeting. Um, my concern is that Mariano Bishop is a very busy street. Um, it's busy from morning to morning, you know, 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. It is constant traffic. And now, and it's hard for us as it is to get in and out of driveways, um, you know, hard in the morning, especially for myself, to get my kids to school who do not go to Henry Ford School. Um, and so now we're increasing the traffic between with the buses and the potential traffic from the parents dropping off their kids, making it harder for you know us to get to the places that we need to get to on Mariana Bishop. So now this affects all of the houses basically on that street that go down to uh, Laurel Street, all the way out to um, the plaza. 
I'm just concerned that this is going to add a lot of a lot more traffic flow and a lot more congestion in an area that's already very congested. Putting that is in if it's being utilized for sports purposes as well, that's just increased flow that's not just during school hours, that's also at night. At night. At night. Um, so I understand the frustration on Amity Street, but if you lived on Mariana Bishop, you understand that the traffic is constant and you say that Amity Street, you know, they use it as a racetrack. I'm afraid one of these days someone is going to get into a bad crash on Mariana Bishop because they do use that road like it's a racetrack. Um, so you're adding an access way outside of, to exit the school onto Mariano Bishop. It, it seems there could be a problem at that area, especially around that bend. Um, with cars coming out of there, the speeding down Mariano Bishop, it makes it really dangerous, especially if you live on that street. And I'm mainly concerned about the traffic. Except for the sporting events or after school events, there's going to be really no additional that yeah, go in there, right? I mean, there's no additional The number of buses are going to be the same and student pick yeah. up and drop offs. The total volume of traffic is going to be the same. We're not, we're not changing the amount of cars or, or buses that are going to be coming, just modifying it to help improve the flow with how the school manages the property. Uh, ultimately, it's not intended to be used. Uh, outside of school hours or outside of you know the, the functions that are being had here in the school, we'll be managing and maintaining how the traffic works. And ultimately, if there is any sort of uh, oversight or review of they need to do the intersection in terms of you know helping with uh, traffic control during uh, peak time events, I think they're going to look at it and see how the traffic is operating. And if they need to uh, provide people to help manage traffic during the peak hours when the buses are leaving at the beginning. So I think they're, they're going to look at it and see how it flows and see what it's going to be. Now, did you say there was going to be a sense of light at the end of that with that gate? No, it's going to be stop patrol. Or uh, caution light or something like that? The, the city does want us to take a look at the uh, the intersection and provide some additional uh, warning signage uh, I think for vehicles. Definitely, to, to like she says, light. absolutely, especially with that corner. You know what I mean? And it does at times get foggy there because of the pond and stuff. Yep. So, you know, I mean, I think definitely there should be some type of lighted uh, warning signs and stuff, you know, which could have always helped on the, on the street, never mind with this added to it. All right. You know, she's absolutely right as far as that street goes. It is, you know, busy and can be dangerous at times, absolutely. I'm just thinking the amount of traffic that it's going to add during school hours, um, going to that light towards Laurel Street. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna add so much more traffic with the buses coming out. I mean, sometimes I'm trying to, you know, get past the buses just to get my kids to school because once one, one comes out, out, they, they, they can't get in or out of our house because people are parked in our driveways, yep. parked in front of our houses, and the buses are being a dead end. We can't even get in or out. So we need to have a flow. a flow. There is no flow right now. It's a dead end bottleneck. And I totally understand where you're coming from. It's just diverting the, the traffic. Well, yeah, has, to we have to spread it out. We have to spread it out so it does flow better. Plus all the all the stores and everything. Yeah, no, so <laughs> it's already traffic well, with that. So no, it brings more traffic already on Mariano Bishop. So yep. now you're going to have buses that will be stopped, waiting for the light to turn, yep. leaving us to not be able to get in and out of our driveways. It, I see it being even crazier than what it already is. To pull over all the time, just to left. <laughs> now, the sidewalk that you say is that on the field side? Uh, no, everything will be outside of the field fencing, so it'll be basically along the fence. So you've got the, the fence line. Right, but she's asking it's going to be on the field it's side be on the of field side, the not on the house the side. The residential house side. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the sidewalk, we're, we're proposing it along the, I guess, the school or the field side. The, the small portion yeah, right. from here to here, essentially connecting the sidewalk. It, it just kind of dies there along the way. So we're going to cross it to the, uh, called the westerly end of the driveway here, and then make a connection basically into the school running along the existing fence line. Uh, we've got the ball through. Uh, any more questions? or? I'll uh, just state your name and address. Yes, I'm Fernando Machado. I live in 960 Mariana Bishop Boulevard. I live over there for 20 years. And this is the effect being where the water comes from right below to my land. Are 
Are you at a higher elevation or lower elevation? Low. Lower elevation. I'm the house that connects the, the water come from under the street to my lake. I read it so many times I come to the, to the city hall to say, you guys put the pipes, connect the water all the way in the back. And that year he told me, oh, that's the end of the year. I was not have the money for that. How much you gonna cost you, the city, to put a hundred feet pipe? How much you gonna cost? Nothing for the city. And how much dirt you guys put on them away? You can feel that. Because of the, with this weather, last, last week, mm -hmm. if you go inside my house, it's like a home. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I did a wall last two years ago because the water comes to my lane. I'm afraid to go in my basement. And somebody called me because I built the wall because to hold the water come to my lane, my house. I have about, about eight feet from the house. You guys, you, you guys know that's the water come from the red door, under the street, go to the back. It don't cost much money to do that. Put the pipe, 100 feet pipe, that's it, done. Fill with fill, that's it, done. The water goes in the back. I don't care the water goes in the back. Comes from the back of the nursing home. Correct. Yeah. My, my because the water, the water is on the other side. So it is last when week. So much water, fill it up, right. and come to my house, to my lane. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and I can just say that, where, where is your house in relation to this? On, on this side of the road? Yeah. So I No, no, no. For me, that's, you go to Handy Lord School, in the back. Okay. The water, if you see, the, you know you know what I'm talking about. The water comes right out of the street, to my lane. It's mine. Okay. What are you talking that walkway is? She's basically across the street. Across the street. Down. Yeah. On the side. Down. No, down further. Down where down your further. walkway is. Where your sidewalk is? Yep. Yeah. Is over here somewhere or back here? Yeah, right, right there. You yeah. said go directly across. So, so from a stormwater perspective, everything flows towards the lake here. Uh, or to the pond rather and what we're doing is we're managing all the runoff from our proposed property so we're we're down gradients we're downhill of your property uh, so anything we do here wouldn't impact it in the first place uh, but ultimately all the runoff from the pavement area is being handled by these new detention basins which, which are essentially big ditches that we build into the ground where the stormwater builds up and it gets released slowly and it'll get released more slowly back towards the pond as it does today so no matter what you guys do if you guys don't do that Handy door school, you have locked up. I built that school at that time. Yep. I knew what's going on over there. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah because and it's I don't filled up with water. That water goes, and the back of the school goes to the other side. Yeah, it's it splits. So there's there's essentially kind of a, a, a peak in the, in the yard here. So everything we have drains this way. I, I do believe from larger kind of zoomed out imagery that this does pitch towards the street in this area. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and, and unfortunately, that's outside of the scope of, of what we're here to do for the access road because we're all downhill of that. So everything from here drains this way. Uh, so if there is a, a larger problem, I, I think that's a DPW question or, or another yeah, discussion. The water stays there. It comes to my life. That's the, the problem I have with it. When I bought that house, I, I like the boats. I like the vocation. When people go on the street and say, hey, you already have the boat, the, the fly, the, 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 the house going to be full of water this year. Thank you very much. <laughs> Things like that. No, that's not the point. Yeah. The point that you guys are gonna do that, the water still come to my to my land. You guys can do something to take that water out of there. Well, uh, with the drainage that you're putting in the parking lot, that should uh, take a good bit of it away from. Yeah, I, I we're managing everything essentially that that drains today this way. I, I think doing doing work up this way, you know, the school already has a budget set for the project and a, and a contract that that's out for this one. Uh, I think again. We'd have to look at that, or the city would have to look at that as, as <coughs> something separate from what we're here to do today. And because of the traffic, too, my daughter's 18 years old at that time. A lady come, tossed Tevin in. My daughter's got to bring the light to go inside the driveway. The lady hits my door. My daughter bought 100 feet that way. My daughter still have a problem in his neck because of that. People drive over here like 60 miles an hour. Yeah. 
And every day, every night, not every, every night, we start with the horn and the lights to the end. Yeah. Let's people do that. Don't, don't bother me. Yeah, we can, we can bring it up to traffic, traffic but that's not It's us, supposed so. to be 30 miles an hour. We go 60, yeah. 70 miles an hour. It's like a risk track for them. And I think that was one of the recommendations that the planning department had or the conservation had was to install additional signage and, you know, It's a nice place to live, nice and quiet there, believe me. Nice and quiet. Everything's clean there. Okay. All right. That's my point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else uh, all set on? All set. Okay. All right. So, so project that you're undertaking is is not going to exacerbate his drainage problem. No, it, it won't. Again, it's like flowing the other way. We're down gradient of, of that property. If, if there's runoff coming from other portions of the school up here that's outside of the school. It's a separate project that, that perhaps should be looked at, but it's not before us, not before the board here now. But the traffic, so you've, you've, you've said that the, uh, the volume of traffic is not changing. The school is not getting any bigger, there's the same number of students roughly, the same right. number of vehicles roughly that are coming and going. But but their concern is that you're directing it onto Bishop Boulevard now primarily instead of to a, another? I, I think it's just the location of whether or not they're coming out of Laurel here or if, or if we're coming out here, it's the same buses are going to be making the same movements. It's just moving it slightly up and down the street. Uh, they're still coming out to Bishop change. Boulevard. Correct. If they would be leaving out that way, they they would be taking that same egress movement. Uh, that's not, that's the buses, not true. The buses that's not actually true. go off of Amity they go, right now. They go, they go off of water. As of right now, the buses come off of Amity. Mm. The buses yeah. don't head yeah. any direction towards Laurel or <coughs> Mariano. They yeah. go straight down Amity, and then uh, they take a left, and they yeah. take a right over by the subway and get onto, you know, either... Going to 24. Yeah. So we don't have any effects as of right now with the buses or the parents dropping their kids off. So all of that volume of traffic is not directed in our direction at all. So Correct. it is increasing absolutely. the yeah. traffic flow in our yeah. area tremendously. You're absolutely right, but that's the only way you can direct it yeah. if you're going to alleviate the issues we have. We got a nursing home at the end, which a rehabilitation which is a lot center, of traffic is which working. emergency vehicles can be get in or out of Amity Street during the school when the two times a day when people are getting in and out. And this is the only way. I mean, Henry Street on the back side of the nursing home, which supposedly is a paper street, which goes over water, which was never developed, and the upon view drive that goes into the back of the nursing home which don't even ask me how that's a street and how is that house is built back there, but there's no way out over there. The only way out would be with this, and you're absolutely right. right. It will increase. You're and right. The there is, there is no, right. there is no the other area. way because we're not going to put a street in over the pond to go out the other way. I mean, you know. But, so yeah. this is the only way. But with safety concerns, with you know lights and stuff, you know maybe mitigate it a little bit, but she's absolutely right. The traffic doesn't go over there now, but that's the only way we can divert it, yeah. to alle alleviate what we have. Because right now it's just a dead end bottleneck. Unfortunately, ours is just a uh, conservation, so we don't I, have to And I understand. I, 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 I feel for you in the traffic, but yeah. there's nothing we as a board can do on that for you. Right. So. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you, you know, got the voice. You get recommendations way, you from you, know. so with something for the traffic yeah. department on the light on how that entrance over there, and you know, cautions, and you know, what I mean, um, you know, that would go a long way with you know recommendations from your board. Yeah. Yeah. Is that within our purview? To well, it's a classic case of jurisdictional <laughs> confusion. You know, I mean, we're supposed to look at the Wetlands Protection Act. Mm -hmm. and there's nothing in the act that talks about caution lights, right, frankly. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, the, the, then you look back at the original order, and, they, and the, uh, the board at that time uh, said they wanted uh, the order of conditions to, to allow the project to go forward, but they wanted a site plan review process to take place. 
And then we thought about that and said, well, if, if they do site plan review, what is that going to get you? Does the site plan review committee have jurisdiction to require you know, speed bumps on a street or signage on a street telling people to, to, to be careful there's a school ahead? So, um, and, and, you know, I guess the... We get these notifications, but we don't get yeah. no notifications at the other meetings well, where we could have input. Yeah, and I understand that. That don't help us. I know, I know. And, and the way that, that for, for example, that site plan review process does not include a public hearing process. <coughs> it's just the way that the law is set up. It could be changed someday, but we deal with what, what we have to deal with now. So that's why you wouldn't have even heard, if, even if they'd done a site plan review, you would not have been notified of it. Um, so, and you're really not in a position on behalf of your client to commit to any traffic controls, are you? Or are you? I, I, mean, I, I am not, and, and my apologies if, if I had the, the traffic a little bit wrong on the existing conditions, but, you know, we're here essentially for the conservation component of it to, to make sure it's designed appropriately yeah. and it, it works. For yeah, the, it's, it's a wetlands issue for, from which is what, what's before us. Um, we do have on our, our site, uh, on our conditions on our site plan review, we have it that the applicant is encouraged to consultation with the traffic division if necessary to direct a solar powered uh, caution sign uh, bus zone ahead. So, I mean, we do have, but we don't enforce. We can't require that, it. You know, yeah. That's a part we of the We can't make them, I mean, do that part. So, like, like I said, can we get a recommendation from the board? Absolutely. We, we, do, we, do, we do have it in there, but I mean, it's, we can't. Put it in the orders where they have to do it. Do you think that something like that? You're from, you live there in the neighborhood. Do you think that some sort of a, a flashing caution sign uh, on no. either side of the entrance to this I, name? I don't know. They do they anything? Don't know. I don't know. Bypass the sign. They're on a mission to head with their calling. I don't think. I mean. You need speed bumps. I you can't put speed, speed bumps on Bishop Street. Yeah. 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 I have seen many of people do it, and they're just like, they don't even realize it's there. All right. Well, take it for your concerns of the traffic thing is out of our, but uh, we do have it in that they should contact uh, traffic, so that's the best we can do for you on that. And I mean, I'll, I'll talk to the, the traffic department and specifically call their attention to the situation down there, and, and uh, they have periodic meetings maybe you can get on the agenda with them to to as neighbors to say look we live here this is what we see happening and, and sort of drive it to their attention more forcefully I'll let who's the ring leader here who can I contact to, to tell you uh, what's possible there is none but I'll give you my email you address your name first. You I'll give you my email address I'm going to put be in touch with you what, what's your name again Frank Xavier X-A-V-I-E-R 158 Amity Street, Fall River, Mass, 02721-2202. Email address, frnkxa at aol.com. F-R-N-K-X-A, is that right? F-R-N-K-X-A? Correct. Yep. Now everybody who's watching yeah. this has heard that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get all this harassing email. Right? I apologize. Short, you know? <laughs> we have their names notified of the meeting so we can send out something. Okay. They're yeah. on the abutters list. Yeah. Oh, well, we've already got your name because you're abutters. You've, all right, so we've yeah. got your addresses yeah. and so I got my letter right. here. I'm going to pay a visit to the traffic department. I'm going to tell them what the situation is. I'm going to encourage them to, to reach out to you and to see what they can suggest. and. And uh, I'll also see if there's a way that you can somehow get on the agenda for one of their meetings to talk to them about this, and, and we'll see what we can do. And, uh, you know, short of that, I could go out there every time school comes in or leaves with a sign. That, that if you want to be I'll tell you, you would not believe half of the stuff you no, see I, there. I've been on Bishop Boulevard a lot, and you're right. That it, it's a speed zone, and, and they're going too fast, and, and we need some controls to, to work on that. But... Um, Unfortunately, this well, I do doesn't... appreciate it, and I thank you for hearing us and listening, you know. I got, I got your email address. Uh, so does everybody else. <laughs> That's it, you know. All right. You guys so, can do something about the water? Yeah. Well, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> I see you for 20 years already. <laughs> um, who should we talk to about that? Well, the school department, right? Well, uh, it's your water. That's 
Just draw water that's flowing out of his land? Is that I, I guess if you look into it, you'd have to figure out if it's coming from a roadway, is it coming from the school? Uh, it's you know, one, one of the come from the school. I can tell you where it's coming from. I know where it's coming from. It's coming from the nursing home. Uh, it's all it's not going, it's, it's coming into our backyards. Okay. No, because I did that school. I did that school. I know what's going on, what's the what the water goes, what's the water comes. <laughs> Well, it definitely comes, and if we got his name, um, what's his name? I know that that's not all of you. Brandon This is Mr. Machado. Yeah. Let me let me let me see what I can find out. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Do you have his email address? We have their address. Got your address. phone number. All right. Do we have your phone address. number. No address. We have their address. Why don't you give us your phone number, if no. you don't mind? On camera. All right, forget about it. Okay. We'll send you a letter. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll follow up, and I'll see what, what's doable. I, I, no promises, but, you know, I think that maybe the school department should be aware that maybe there's a situation they could address maybe someday. I, I don't know. Unless the new assistant planner has a thought. Okay. You're really going to all have to do a study to see where all the water is sheeting off of yeah. in the general area. Probably take some it, a full comprehensive stormwater study mm -hmm. to kind of look into that whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. right. We'll send you whatever we can find find out about. So anyway, having said all that, my recommendation is that you issue an order of conditions so the project can go forward, uh, subject to the special conditions that I. Okay. Send that to the proponent and circulate to you guys. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to ask for a motion for the uh, special conditions on the project uh, SE 24-745, uh, recording the prior to the work and start. The order of conditions shall be recorded by applicant. Proof of recording shall be provided to the Conservation Commission. Uh, two, uh, marking limit of work prior to the start of work at the site control limit work shall be clearly marked by installation of erosion control, construction, fencing, stakes, flags. Commission shall be notified that the installation is ready for inspection and approval. Such markers shall be checked and replaced as necessary and shall be maintained until construction is completed. Uh, approval erosion and sedimentation control prior to the start of work at the site. Erosion and sedimentation control shall be installed and commission shall be contacted in order to conduct an inspection and ensure that the same have been properly installed to commission satisfaction for maintaining markers controls at any time before, during, or after construction and until the use of the certificate of compliance. The commission or the agents may be, uh, require the applicant to modify, irrigants, and restore or maintain markers identifying limits of work, erosion and sedimentation control, um, activities that are subject to this order. Let's see, stockpile, all stockpiles of soil as extinct for more than one day shall be surrounded by a row of entrenched uh, silk fence and shall be covered. Grading, grading shall be accompanied by, uh, so the runoff shall not direct it to the properties of others. Uh, replication as uh, per special conditions number three of the original order of conditions at the end of each growing season for a two-year period, a process report, the relative success or failure of the wetland replication uh, efforts shall be submitted to the Barber Conservation Commission. Inspection report shall be uh, included and present a vegetation uh, code list of types of plants growing in the wetlands. Uh, eight, uh, site plan review. Requirement of the site plan review set forth as special conditions number two of the original order of conditions is waived. However, taken into account that this is a new access road, will intersect with the existing very busy street of uh, Mariano S. Bishop Boulevard. The applicant is encouraged in consultation with the traffic division, if necessary, to erect a solar power flashing caution sign, such as caution school zone ahead uh, during operational during normal school hours. A certificate of compliance upon completion of construction and final soil stabilization. The applicant shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission to request a certificate of compliance, a complete request for a certificate of compliance with WPA Form 8A or other forms required by the Conservation Commission. Uh, so can I have a motion? 
I'll make the motion to approve with the order of special conditions. As read. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3-0. Thanks. Thank you. Next is uh, item four under new business. I uh, received a correspondence, review, and discussion of notice non compliance issued by from Khalib Enterprise LLC regarding the Shell Station property at 372 Plymouth Ave. This is a matter of file. Yeah, this is just sent to us as a matter of courtesy and uh, there's no action required. It was just a uh, place on file? Yeah. Okay. It's my recommendation. Uh, we don't need a motion for that or a vote, right? Doesn't hurt. Okay. Can I have a motion to place on file? I make a motion to place the document on file. Second. Vote? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, number item five is a recipient of correspondence uh, review discussion. Uh, notice of non-compliance issued from the 20th Real Estate uh, Management uh, regarding property at 102, 1, 1012 Bedford Street. Uh, can I have a motion to put this on file? I'll make a motion to record this on, uh, record the correspondence on file. Second. Vote. Okay. Aye. Vote passes 3-0. Uh, item six, the receipt of a correspondence a review discussion of notice of release notification issued from Sage Environmental regarding the property at 851 Globe Street. Uh, can I have a motion to place this on file? I'll make a motion to place this correspondence on file. Second. Uh, vote. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Three zero. Uh, seven is receipt of correspondence review and discussion of notice of immediate response action. Completion issued from CES CEC regarding the property in the vicinity of Caroline and Neptune Street. Can I have a motion to place this on file? I'll make a motion to uh, place the correspondence on file. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Vote passes 3 0. Uh, can I have a motion for the approval of minutes on August 2nd, 2021? I'll make a motion for the approval of minutes from September. from. August 2000? Uh, 21. Yeah. Uh, no public input, I see. Okay, second. Uh, second. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Vote. Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>